Hey everyone, CyberCDH here. Well, yet another zero day is sweeping across the world of cybersecurity and it's our old friend Java that's keeping everyone in the security incident response world pretty busy right now thanks to a deserialization bug which has meant that many thousands of servers both online and offline are vulnerable to a remote code execution attack. The attack has been rather cutely named log for shell Worst of all, this attack is super simple to exploit. We've already seen attacks observed in the wild and actually finding where this particular vulnerable piece of code is in your organization is actually pretty tricky to do for reasons we'll get into shortly. Today we're going to talk about what happened, how you can mitigate against this particular issue and also talk about how you can put you and your organization in a best defensible position to prevent further similar attacks in the future. Today's sponsor of the video is Intersert. You'll find out why they can help you and your organization defend against log for shell and other similar zero days going forward at the end of this video. So please stay tuned for that. But for now, let's dive right in. So let's talk about what happened. Exploit code for CVE 2021-44228 dropped across the internet on Friday, of course, on the 10th of December for an unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerability in Apache's log4j2 logging package. The bug is triggered when a specially crafted string provided by the attacker through a variety of different input methods such as within the URL in the user agent string or even like a username field for example pretty much anywhere where a user can influence data within the body of a web request when that information is passed and processed by the vulnerable log4j2 package well that could lead to remote code execution on the underlying server all an attacker has to do is perform a very simple HTTP request against a target system that will generate a log using the log4j2 package that leverages something called JNDI, the Java Naming and Directory Interface, and that performs ultimately a request to an attacker-controlled website, and then that vulnerability then causes the process to reach out to the website and execute a malicious Java class payload. The specially crafted string that the attacker has to provide within that initial HTTP request can be identified through several components. It contains the string JNDI, which refers to the Java naming directory interface and also following that the protocol such as LDAP, RMI, HTTP etc will precede the attacker controlled domain. A security teams aim to detect the exploitation of this particular vulnerability by examining log files and all the rest of it. Attackers have started to add obfuscation to these requests to evade filtering and detections based on those particular request patterns. Stuff that the vendors have seen include running a lower and uppercase command within the exploit string and even more complex complicated obfuscation techniques as well, all trying to bypass the string matching detections. So far, the vast majority of the observed activity has been scanning to see who is vulnerable, but exploitation and post-exploitation activities have also been observed as well. Based on the nature of this vulnerability, once the attacker has got full access and control of the application, they can perform really a myriad of objectives. Microsoft in particular report they've seen activities such as installing coin miners, cobalt strike beacons to enable credential theft and lateral movement and exfiltration of data from compromised systems as well. So this is about as serious as it gets. How can we mitigate? Let's talk about that next. Well, all systems, including those that are not customer or internet facing, are actually potentially vulnerable to this exploit. Backend systems and microservices as well need to be inspected, need to be upgraded if you're running a vulnerable version. The recommended action is to update Log4j2 to version 2.15.0. This new version introduces new security controls for JNDI session security to restrict access to remote resources. In particular, there is restriction on JNDI protocols to ones that you list, also restricting LDAP requests to listed hosts, and also the list of allowed names for remote Java classes as well. Also, consideration should be given to prevent attacks on a network level outbound connections from affected servers can be limited to just trusted hosts and trusted protocols to prevent the vulnerable Java service from downloading any malicious class files via LDAP. In the case the log4j2 vulnerable component cannot be updated for any reason, versions 2.10 to 2.14.1 support a parameter to disable the vulnerable feature as well. Ensure that parameter is configured in the startup script of the Java virtual machine. Alternatively, if you're using an earlier version, you may set 
a particular environment variable to force this particular change. Kubernetes administrators, well, you're not left out either. You may use the kubectl set env command to actually set the environment variable to apply the mitigation across Kubernetes clusters where the Java applications are running log4j2 to effectively reflect on all pods and containers automatically. Overall, the main mitigation step would be to apply the patch to update your log4j2 instances to the latest version as advised by Apache in their security bulletin. But as I alluded to earlier, this is a tricky exploit to understand where your vulnerable code may be in your organization. If you develop an application and you understand what dependencies that application has, then yes, it may be easy for you to go and implement that patch. But what about the other software that you may have bought, the commercial systems within any organization around the world? How do you know that they're not using a vulnerable component? And so making sure that you detect and prevent against possible post-exploitation activity is certainly something to focus on and let's talk about that now with detecting and preventing similar attack scenarios. So I said earlier that actually identifying all the potentially affected applications and services in your environment may actually be really tricky and that's because the issue affects many thousands of services that you may not even know depends on this particular Java library. You may use the log4j2 library in your own code or your own services that your company develops in-house and that might be relatively easy for you to go and track down but what about the platforms that you've bought from third parties it could be your finance system your accounting system your HR system your customer relationship management tool all of these may in fact have the dependency on this particular vulnerable logging library so whilst you should definitely focus on the mitigation steps that we've outlined already to put yourself in the best defensible position personally I focus on the assumed breach scenario and look at the wider picture of post exploitation activity what do I mean by that well I try and assume that some kind of breach is going to take place in my environment through this zero day with log for shell or indeed some other kind of vulnerability exploit and aim to detect the post exploitation activity detect what the bad guys are going to do next once they've broken into your organization well what are they going to do deploy some malware deploy some ransomware remain persistent escalate their privileges steal some information run some crypto miner all that kind of bad stuff is really to put yourself in the best defensible position a really great thing to go and focus on this is where a platform called intercept protect can really help you intercept protect is a cloud workload protection platform that defends your cloud infrastructure against unauthorized and malicious code. Intercer can protect all types of cloud compute resources, virtual machines, containers, Kubernetes clusters, CAS, FAST, all under one roof without the need for any heavy configuration or policies or rules. Intercer Protect gives you full runtime visibility as well about all applications and processes and you can secure up to 10 devices free of charge. So please go and check them out using the link below in the description of this video to get going completely for free and secure 10 of your devices. Installing the sensor is super easy. There's a copy and paste command. Within seconds, your device can be protected. It even detected a reverse shell when I gave the platform a cheeky quick test. The UI is super easy to follow you can get peace of mind that no matter what zero day or what vulnerability is exploited by the adversaries to break into your environment you'll be able to detect and respond to malicious activity that's happening within your environment. Intercer support me here on YouTube. My thanks to them for that. Please click the link below to find out more about the Intercer platform and how it can really save your bacon when things start to hot up in the world of cyber security. Thank you for joining me here today on YouTube. If you like what you see and you want to show support for this channel, please hit that like button, hit subscribe and that bell notification button to get notified as to more content. You can even check me out on Patreon as well, get exclusive access to to the most interesting things I read about in the industry and also an early access to my research posts covering all things malware and threat intelligence as well. Be well, stay safe and keep yourselves on the front foot by checking out Intercept Protect using the link below in the description. Thank you.